Myth number one. Supplements are a waste of money. <laughs> That's a myth. It's a myth. I think, I mean, there's a, there's some context and nuance. You did not need thinking music. <laughs> can, I, can I extend? Please. Can I extend? Yes, please. Um, so I think, I think there are, I did a video on this, I think there are kind of four or five good supplements for people to kind of consider broadly. Oh, please tell depending me what on they, who are. they are. Uh, top of that list would be creatine. Oh, um, yes. Thank you very much. <laughs> sorry, that's sorry. That's my wife's listening right now. I'm just saying that yeah. for her. I can yeah. I can see the biceps over there. <laughs> <laughs> I do have my creatine. So creatine. <laughs> and the, the funny thing about creatine <laughs> is, <tickled> pink. <laughs> uh, I think I think people assume it's just for muscles. That's what I thought. Mm. I thought yeah. it was like yeah. thing. Oh. Uh, there's some. Um, I mean, it certainly is helpful for building strength, which is important as we age for longevity. But it's also there's emerging research showing it's beneficial for cognition. Mm, there was like a me. pilot study that just came out a couple of months ago, so pretty hot off the press, where they took uh, adults with depression and randomized them to cognitive behavioral therapy, which yep. we know can be effective, and then cogn cognitive behavioral therapy plus five grams of creatine per day. Both groups had significant benefits but the group with the added creatine had significant benefits compared to just the cognitive behavioral therapy. Mm. That was only an eight-week study, so I, you know, we'd like to see it go longer, but there was 100 participants, and it kind of builds on some other evidence in that space. Mechanism not fully uh, understood. There's also some evidence showing creatine supplementation at about 10 grams a day can be beneficial for bone health in postmenopausal women and um, risk of osteoporosis, osteopenia, osteoporosis and fractures becomes heightened after the age of about 60 for women. So that's another kind of good in indication to use creatine. And then one that I thought was very helpful, certainly for me as I travel, they, these researchers looked at sleep deprivation and they somehow convinced people to come in and in, a, in their lab keep them up all night and this was a randomized crossover trial, and they would measure throughout the night different cognitive tasks when they're either taking a placebo or creatine, and it was high-dose creatine. This was about 30 grams of creatine, which is a very high dose. Mm -hmm. And cognition was significantly improved after sleep deprivation when you were supplementing with creatine. Interesting. Wow. And the explanation for that is that at a high dose, essentially... Creatine, initially, as you're starting creatine, it saturates muscle cells. And then over time, as you increase the dose or take it for longer, there's enough creatine left to cross the blood-brain barrier and enter the, the brain. And it can affect sort of brain wow. um, metabolism. So this, so yeah. I imagine it would be very good for people who are struggling to get proper sleep and need to operate on a mm -hmm. daily basis. Yeah, and this was an acute study, so it was they were looking at sleep depriving people and then measuring cognition through the night and the next day. Um, so I don't I don't know whether it's something you would want to be doing 30 grams every day mm -hmm. all the time. Yeah. That that evidence certainly doesn't speak to that. Um, but the one thing in why creatine's at the top of my list is not only are these very consistent kind of benefits borne out in the evidence, but the safety profile is really good. Okay. So at worst people may experience some kind of GI nausea in the 15, 20 minutes after having creatine. And one way around that is splitting the dose. So if you are doing a high dose, like a 10 grams or 20 grams over a day, instead of just having that all at once, you could split that morning and night and have it with food. Mm -hmm. And, and yeah. the great thing is that you get them as like delicious gummies now, either apple or raspberry. I didn't Those know. Those are a problem. I just, yeah. They're pro uh, a problem in, in the so nice. you want to have more. They're just too okay. good. <laughs> yeah. They're just too good. I oh, actually have some. I mean, I have some in my bag now. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> You've got to be careful about which gummies you bring into. <laughs> um, <laughs> I get my creatine gummies just at the corner of Smith Street. It's <laughs> from a guy called Warren. Um, <laughs> but that, that well, that's creatine. Then I just quickly oh, yes, spray yes, a lot yeah. off. Uh, is anyone uh, else just like praying that their supplements are on this list? I don't um, take it. I take zero supplements, so... Uh, I'm confident. Go. Okay, so <laughs> omega-3 DHA EPA, oh. which can be found in a fish oil or an algae oil, that really for someone who's not eating fatty fish two or three times a week, okay. mm -hmm. which the average Australian's not. But mm -hmm. if you are, then you probably don't need to go out and buy that supplement. But if, if you're not eating fatty fish two or three times a week, 
then you'll likely benefit from that. Is that would that classify under a vegan diet if someone's vegan? A vegan diet would not. They wouldn't be eating the fish, yep. so they could supplement with the algae oil. Uh, algae oil. Yeah. Okay, so the fish that. get the DHA and EPA omega threes either by eating a fish that essentially the EPA and DHA passes up the food chain from algae. Gotcha. Oh, so wow. they can either eat it directly wow. from the algae or from another fish that. Yeah, okay. okay, gotcha. There's that. Second. There's that. So that's second. Um, I would say a multivitamin depends. This is this is dependent mm. on on the person. Um, one of the things, like as you as you move to a more plant rich kind of high fiber, less animal protein diet, you know, all, all diets come with their limitations. The pros of that, or I've explained before, is that you your cardiometabolic health and risk risk factors for type two diabetes, et cetera, shift in a favorable direction. One of the downsides is that there are nutrients of focus, and there is a potential to have inadequate intake of certain micronutrients. So, if you're someone that is eating a vegetarian or vegan diet, I certainly recommend a multivitamin. Mm-hmm. Um, and which vitamins would be in that multi? So the key ones. So the key ones within that dietary pattern are going to be B12, Mm -hmm. uh, iron. We're going to have, they're already taking their omega-3 fish oil, Mm -hmm. um, selenium and zinc. Right. The the, the big kind of five. Right. Okay. Um, So multivitamin and then I would say like a prebiotic. Mm -hmm. So I I formulated a prebiotic called DMN, Daily Microbiome Nutrition. Mm -hmm. Um, So I can... Like that, that I'm involved with this brand. I'm not saying everyone needs it. Yeah. Um, it's by a company called 38 Terra. And that has been formulated essentially as a multivitamin, but for your microbiome. Wow. Do you know, before I mentioned there's three classes of, mm. of um, fiber. prebiotics. So yep. you've got prebiotic fiber, resistant starch, and polyphenols. Yeah. And so that product, Daily Microbiome Nutrition, contains those using ingredients that have been clinically studied in randomized controlled trials in the right dose to feed various species of bacteria that we know are beneficial. So to improve bowel movements, to improve the gut lining, which kind of lowers kind of permeability and inflammation. Um, mm-hmm. those, are, those are at the top of my list. Great. Now, they're not, none of those, I would say, are absolutely essential mm. for people. Mm. The essential... The essential ones would be where someone's not getting a micronutrient in their diet, like a vegan diet, and you don't have DHA and EPA, the Mm omega-3s, or you don't have B12, right? Mm -hmm. A lot of those other ones are more around optimizing and and nice-to-haves. Yeah, okay. Magnesium? Magnesium, is that one? I I thought that was going to be in the top five, but no. It's not in my top five, but it's certainly, if if someone's under-consuming magnesium, it can be helpful. In a plant-rich diet, if you're eating a very plant-rich diet, you're getting a lot of magnesium. Okay. It's one of the benefits of it. Can I ask a supplementary game show question? A supplementary oh. supplement question? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> it's good. Um, the myth that I should be getting that stuff in food as opposed to a pill, mm-hmm. is that uh, because I, obviously if you're, t- if, you're have, if you're vegan or are you having a restricted eating for whatever reason, you're not going to get them. But am I better to try and get it in food than in a pill? Let's take something like creatine. Yeah. So creatine is found in certain foods. It's found in your body makes about one gram of creatine a day. Yeah. And then the average omnivore gets about one gram okay. of creatine through like red meat, some in eggs, few different animal foods, a little bit in dairy. The problem is to get five to 10 grams of creatine a day out of animal foods, you'd have to be consuming copious amounts of that. Yeah. And then what you're doing is you're getting increased exposure to saturated fat, heme iron, which we know mm. is associated with cardiovascular disease. Yeah. So it's possible to get it through the diet, but it might not be optimal yeah. from a from a longevity point of view. Okay. Um, and then... Certain micronutri- micronutrients like B12, yeah, I think if you can get it through diet and it fits within your dietary approach. I guess something that you can implement over a long course of time. Like yeah. like if someone's eating an om- omnivorous diet, they don't need to worry about supplementing with B12. B12 yeah. is really for that person who's eating a vegetarian or vegan diet. Maybe they've gone that way for planetary health or ethical reasons. Mm. 
We don't want that person to, to develop a B12 deficiency yeah, because that can have a number of negative consequences and it's easy for them to add it to their kind of daily regime in a form that we know is bioavailable. It will help them maintain healthy B12 status. Great. The other one that I didn't mention mm. in the multi was iodine. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, just the a little like alarm bell goes off in my head when you, when you say like, okay, well, the body only creates with creatine, the body only creates one milligram a day and uh, through eating the foods that we would naturally eat, we can only do another. So I kind of go, well, does the body need that much creatine or why does the body need that much creatine if, it, if it's never been something that we've had got before? I guess this brings us back to evolution mm -hmm. and kind of the biology that we have in our genes are really shaped through evolution which is determined by what has helped us survive. Mm -hmm. So evolution is all about getting to an age to procreate. It's not necessarily the best genes for avoiding osteoporosis or cancer or living a long life, mm. right? Because evolution essentially doesn't care about you too much once, once you've already had children. Mm -hmm. mm. So there's been no selection pressure on our genetic makeup to give us these genes that help us live to 100 Gotcha. Our body and like the physiology, the, our body's physiology and the nutrients that we're synthesizing and that we're not, all of that has been shaped over hundreds of thousands of years to get us to a point where we can have children. Mm -hmm. It hasn't been shaped to get us to 70, 80, 90 in good health. Yeah, sure. Okay. Does, does that make yeah, sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so, so essentially what our body is just doing naturally mm -hmm. There is no reason to believe that is best also mm -hmm. for, for long-term yeah, health. Yeah. That's, that's, it's logical. It makes sense. Like I understand your point. Mm -hmm. It's called the naturalistic fallacy. Mm -hmm. um, but it just comes back to understanding what, you know, what evolution is mm -hmm. and then appreciating that we can use science to go back and test some of those things. Right? And in this case, we're, we're seeing, you know, pretty consistent across the board benefits to supplementing with creatine above a level that your body would naturally produce every day.